Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Bola Shorunke Jean. Uh, my full name is Bolanle Shorunke Jean, but everybody calls me Bola. Um, I have I have my co-host. My husband is on. I don't know if he signed on. He's going to be joining if he's not on right now because he's taking care of the four-year-old. He's going to be my co-host so that if there are any questions that anybody has that he may have a better answer, I will direct to him. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a I am a mom. I have two beautiful, two handsome kids, um, one 10 year old and one four year old. Um, I've been happily married for 13 years um, and praying for 100 more years. Um, I work in uh, Miami Dade County, which is a which is county government. I work. I am the budget division director and I manage a budget of over 500 million dollars. Um, I'm just telling you this, that I work with numbers and the things that I, we're going to discuss today is things that I've tried, things that I've, I've worked with. I'm going to share when I'm talking about investment, I'm going to give you a sample of what I've done through the years. And before I start, um, I want to, there's a disclaimer. I am not a broker. I'm not a financial advisor, but this is just sharing knowledge with you. Uh, this is just for educational purposes so that we can learn about investment. Okay. As we are Christians and we have, as we are Christians, I want like brother Eric, when he was praying that this is not for, to mock anyone, but just to advance ourselves. The Bible verses that uh, supports investing. But first of all, before we talk about investment, the first thing that we have to also talk about is like, no matter how much money you make, let us always remember to do our, our tithes, our offering, um, that comes first. We have to take care of God. We take care of God's house. That comes first before we talk about investment. So we talk about ethical investing. We have some Bible verses here to support what we're doing. I'm just gonna do like three of them because of our time. Ethical investing, but you can take note of these verses. Um, what does the Bible say about investing, ethical investing? Uh, if you look at Proverbs 13, 11, this honest money dwindles away, but he who got his money little by little makes it grow. Which means whatever we do that we're investing, that we're saving, we want to make sure it is what pleases God. Planning ahead, there's nothing wrong. Because some people would say, oh, yeah, you never you, uh, wish... I, I need to leave now. I never know when I'm going to die. Yeah. Well, guess what? When you, especially when you have family, you want to make sure your children, your husband or your wife are taken care of. We are Christians. We always pray for long life, but we never know what, what is the plan of God in our lives. We want to make sure we plan ahead. And it could be, it may not be death. It could be maybe we, we don't like our career right now. And we decide we need to take a three month break. Can you do without that? Or do, are you going to continue working in a place that you do not like? So you need to plan ahead. For we, If you look at Luke 14, 20 to 30, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it less after he has laid the foundation and he's not able to finish. All who see it begin to mock him saying, this man to be, began to build and was not able to finish. This guy was not able to finish because he did not plan ahead. So we, that's one of the reasons we're doing this because we want to plan ahead to be able to build that house that God has intended for us to build. Saving and investing, 1 Corinthians 16, 2. 
On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when, it, when I come, no collections will have to be made, which means when the time of famine comes, when the time of recession comes, you have money saved. Time of retirement, you have money saved. So this slide, this slide is to support that what we're doing today is backed up by the Bible. So today we're talking about investing. Investing versus savings. What is investing? Investing is money committed to earn return for long-term goals, such as retirement. What is the difference between, somebody can ask, what's, why, if I don't want to invest, what's the difference between it and savings? Savings is good, but when you're talking about long-term goal, it's better for you to, you need a combination of your savings and investing. You don't want to have, you don't want to have um, all your eggs in one basket. So investing money is a long-term goal that you can do for retirement, that you can do for income. Generally, investing is associated with putting them away for a long time. I'm talking about 10 years. I'm talking about 20 years. While savings is money you use for short-term goals, be belong in an account that is liquid. What does it mean to, li to be liquid? Liquid means uh, cash, something that you can easily have access to. Your savings is for your short-term goals that's paying your rent, paying your car bills, paying your insurance, paying your phone bills. Emergency fund, for example, if something happens to my car, I need to have cash available. Investing, let's talk about this. Investing is riskier than saving money. Savings are sometimes guaranteed, but investments are not. The reason that we say savings are guaranteed, most, if you look at your banks, all the banks that I save my money is FDIC insured, which means it's federally insured. I think it's about $250,000 now. And what, whatever money you have in your savings or in your check-ins is insured up to $250,000. So no matter how, what happens to the bank, whatever you have in there, up to $250,000, the bank is obligated to give to you. Whereas investing is in the market. If you lose money, you have to suck it up. Does anybody have questions? Any question yet? Okay. Now, investing versus savings. Now, I did a little chart to put in here. If I have $20,000 today, what will happen in 20 years? If I have $20,000 today and I put it under my mattress, remember uh, our great grandmothers used to do that because they couldn't go to the bank. They saved money and they'll keep it under the mattress so nobody steals it. So if you keep it under your mattress or you keep it in the shoe box, your $20,000 will still be $20,000. If you put it in the bank, let's look at an average. If we look at the last 10, 20 years, the savings in the bank is not being higher than 2%, right? If you look at the average, 2%, you'll be at $29,827, which is a growth of about, that's, um, that's about almost 5%. That's the growth. Whereas if you put it in the market, for over 20 years, that 20,000 would have grown to, I think is $60,000. Yes, over $60,000 would have grown that much. That is the difference. Remember through that 20 years, it's gonna be ups and down. You just have to make sure you stay in the market. Types of investments. When we talk about investments, there are different kinds of investments. There's the stocks. This is buying a tiny piece of a company. For example, but like buying Apple buying Microsoft, buying Mac Bank of America. You buy a share for a particular company and there's options. An option is an asset derived from a stock and it provides the option holder the right to buy or sell the stock at a specific time. So options, I look at it like it's kind of like gambling. You have to really know how to do options before you get into it. You have to do your research. Bond, bonds is a loan with investment. What it means is like, Let's say a company, they need money to do their capital investment. They sell bonds. They want people to invest in their company. So you are buying a loan with interest. A bond is usually a very, most of the time, is usually a very safe investment, but it doesn't give you a high return as stocks. And there's something called ETFs, which is exchange traded funds. Exchange traded funds are like stocks, but it's just that it contains a bundle of investments. So you have, 
you're able to balance your state, your, your, your risk. So you have a bunch, you have, you can have a range of stocks, bonds, and currencies, and cash in it. Okay. And then the new thing now that I'm even researching is crypto coins. I'm sure every one of you have heard about crypto coins. That's the new thing now. Crypto coins is a digital or virtual currency that is secured by cryptography, which makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend. And not every platform sells crypto coins. So that's a new thing that everybody's researching. And there's mutual funds, there's cash equivalents, there's real estate. We all know real estate, which is buying properties. And if you decide, you know what, I don't wanna spend money in buying a property because I don't like property, the management of that property because it's a lot of work. That's me. You can, instead of doing that, you can, you can invest in real estate investment trust. There's some mutual funds that are real estate related to that you can invest in. You can put a part of your money in there instead of having a property. And they're commodities. Commodities includes grains, gold, beef, oil, and natural gas. Okay, beginners investing tips. So the question we ask is, I'm in school, I'm in college, I'm in high school. How can I invest? I don't make money now. Yes, you don't make money now, but the money that you get from birthdays, from Christmas, I'm not saying you shouldn't buy that new Nike, the new Jordan, but start saving now. Start saving now. So this is what I tell people. If you want to start investing, avoid lifestyle creep. What does that mean? If you're working, you get a merit increase or you get a bonus. Don't increase your lifestyle. Put that money in savings or invest that money. Start investing little at a time. Know what you're investing for. What are you investing for? Are you investing for retirement? Are you investing to buy a house? Are you investing to buy a car? <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because you may have a goal. I'm finishing college right now. And in five years, I want to buy a house. So instead of my money sitting in, the, in savings, I want to put some of my money investment to help me grow my money fast. So what is what are you investing for? Are you investing for retirement? Because if you're investing for retirement, you have a long time. So you can you can take more risk, especially when you're 22, 23. Under, understand the risk you're taking. That when if you go into the stock market, they're going to be ups and down. But if you look at the history of the stock market in the last 195 years, the stock market has been in recession, has been down maybe 24 to 25 times. That's less than 20%. And when it goes down, most of the time on average, it rebounds in six months and you make your money back. You just make sure you don't take your money out quick. Diversify your investment. We're going to talk about diversification, which means don't only put your money in, in Apple. Don't only put your money in um and Microsoft diversify so that when the market, when the market is going up and down, you have you, your your basket is balanced. Invest for the long term for you to be able to make good money. Invest for the long term. Don't be scared. If you're scared, you cannot do investment. Make an investment plan and stick to it. Research so you can pick the best companies. This I'm very big on. Research, research, research. Don't rely on what I told you, what I'm telling you or teaching you today. You need to do your own research. What do I, what would I want to invest in? What would bring me money? This is my plan. My plan is different from your plan. So please do your research. Stocks versus bonds. Stocks are usually invested in for powerful growth, while bonds are invested in for their steady income and low volatility. We talked about that. Stocks are very, vol are very volatile. But because a lot, most of the people I'm talking to are very young, so there's nothing wrong to have a mixture of stocks and bonds. Okay, before you invest, now we're talking about investment. The first thing I ask people before you start investing, do you have any credit card debt? Because if you do, you need to take care of that. There's no, there, it doesn't make any sense if you have a credit card debt, that interest is about 25%. And you have investment that's only bringing you 8%. You want to pay off your credit card debt so that you can, so you, you can stop paying that interest. Okay. Emergency fund. Do you have emergency fund? If you stop working today, do you have savings? 
to pay your monthly bill up from three to six months? Do you have emergency fund? If my car breaks down, do you have money to repair my car to get me to my job? Retirement. Do you have money for retirement? And then your age. And the reason we talk about age, the younger you are, the riskier you can, the more risk that you can take. The older you are, the more conservative you want to be. You don't want to put most of your money, most of your money in stocks when you're getting towards retirement because of the market. Investing in stocks online could not be easier. And it's true. There are a lot of platforms. One of the simplest and probably the cheapest way to use an online investment platform. It takes a matter of minutes to sign up. It is so true. I'll tell you that. And another thing that I like about in, uh, investing online now is it's free to trade, to buy and sell. Before, when I used to be, when I was, I, I do have E-Trade before Rob, Robinhood, which is a platform which I'm going to share with you. They used to charge you $6.95 to, to do any trade, but now it's free. How to start? Again, know what you're investing for. How you inf invest in pet depends on what exactly you're investing for. Am I investing for a, home, a house that I want to buy in five years? Or am I investing for retirement, which is going to be in 30 years? You can take more, more risk for the retirement in 30 years, while the house that you're buying in five years, you have to be a little bit more conservative. Understand the risk you're taking before deciding what to invest. You'll need to first assess your personal risk tolerance. How much tolerance can you take? How much of your investment you can really afford to lose if the market goes down? I always tell people before you invest, make sure it's the money that you don't need, that you don't need for emergency right now. It's the money that you put on the side that if the market goes down, you can look the other way and just leave it until the market comes up. Stock investment is the best long-term return on your money. Research stocks, mutual funds you're interested in and has, re, re, again, I'm gonna emphasize you need to research. Do your research and look for things that you can invest in, in a long term, invest in in a long time. Long term, is the stock bond or mutual fund relevant now in five, 10 or 20 years? So when you're researching, for example, should I be investing in, I'm giving you an example. Should I be investing in Tesla right now or in Marathon Oil? If you look at the trend right, trend right now, a lot of the companies are moving to electrical vehicles. Marathon Oil may not be as relevant as it is today. So think about it in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years, will it be, will Marathon Oil still be relevant? But when you look at Apple, between you and me, I think Apple will still be relevant in 20 years because they continue to improve their product. They bring in new products almost every year or probably every six months. And people love Apple in America. Okay, so this is the investment vehicles. It goes from the safest to the riskiest of investment. Your savings account is the safest of investment like I said, because it's federally insured by the government. And then there's mutual funds, the second safest one, and then a blend of mutual funds, stocks and bonds. That's what you call diversification. And then mutual funds with diversified stocks and individual stocks. Your indiv buying individual stocks is the riskiest because when there's a problem with a company, it affects the shares that you buy. Number six would be options. Yes, sir. You're right. That's my husband. That's my co-host. Number six will be, yes, which is the riskiest. You're right. Thank you. How much money do you need to start? I always tell people you don't need to have $10,000 to start investing. For example, I'm going to go, I'm going to tell you about the platforms that I use. For example, Robinhood is it's only Robinhood that I have that I know that does this, but there are other platforms. You can buy fractions of a stock, which means you can have $100 and choose five different stocks that you want to buy and have a fraction of it. You don't need a lot of money and it's better to start small than to wait. And one of the things I tell people before you start investing, please make sure you research. And there's some platforms that will allow you to play around 
with virtual money. What I mean is they, they have some things that you can play around that is not your real money that you can play around with. So you can start that. How can I invest with little money? Invest quarters at a time using a spare change app. There are so many apps that can help you with that. Set up automatic, small, periodic transfers from your checking account. Robinhood allows you to do that. You can do weekly, you can do it bi-weekly or monthly. Use, okay, let me go back. So do you, you wanna see if there's any questions? Yeah, are there any questions? Brother Eric is monitoring that for me. I don't, any questions? Cause we're going through this, I wanna make sure. It looks like there are, not, there are no questions. Use a low cost, no cost investing service. Like I told you, we're so, you guys are so lucky right now. All the platforms that I use does not have any fees. What are GICS? What is that? GICS. Babe, somebody just asked a question. What are GICS? It was on your um, previous slide. Go back. Like the, uh, one of the least risky. Oh, savings, it's account money market. Okay, I'm gonna, Sudi, can you research? I, I can look me? it up. Yeah, yeah we're gonna look it up and get back to you. Thank you, Sister Mallora. And probably something government. How can I invest with little money? Use a low cost, no cost investing service. Brew your own coffee, invest your Starbucks money. Instead of going to Starbucks five days a week, you can choose maybe Fridays is the only day you treat yourself and make your own coffee and save money. Immediately invest any tax returns. If you don't need your tax returns for any emergency, if you don't need it for, um, you know, life happens, invest your tax returns, put some in savings and invest the rest of it. Invest any raises instead of altering your lifestyle. If you get any raise, don't because of that, go buy a bigger house, unless you need it. If you don't need it, don't buy a, 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 a more expensive car. Save it. Ask relatives for, for investing money that are rather than gifts. I do this. Whenever family wants to give my children money for birthdays, I gift, I tell them half of it should be for gifts and half of it cash so I can invest it for them. Babe, did you find it? Yeah, it's... Um... So global industry classification standard built in 1999 for the S&P. And it's mostly, okay. it mostly has 11 sectors, uh, 11 sectors with industry companies. And it, it seems like it's just a sector for, for um, government. It's like a okay. government uh, standard for S&P. Okay. So, so you can anything, just invest in okay. that. Okay. Government anyways is usually very stable because they're not very aggressive. And I saw Michael... Ferguson, you asked a question. What was the question? This question was. Brother Eric, I didn't hear you. Yes, yes, this question was if you're late, you're too lazy to make a big trading app account, you can also use the Cash App uh, to Thanks. buy stocks in Bitcoin. Yes, that's true, because that's what he does. <laughs> Stick with the market. I always tell people if you're going to get into it, don't get frazzled or frazzled when the market is down. It's not going to stay there for a long time. If anybody's in the stock market right now, um, in this month of March, the market has been going up and down. And I was watching uh, a podcast and the person that I was watching was saying that usually every year at the time of March, in the month of March, the market usually goes down. So you stick with the market, especially if you're investing for retirement. If you're investing for retirement, the stock market is your friend. Stick with the market. Don't get scared. When the market is down, because usually I check my account almost every day, but when the market is down, I don't even check it. I, I, I just, you know, out of mind, out of sight until I see that the market is coming up. So you stick with the market. Don't get scared. It can be petrifying when the market tanks and it will tank. It always does. But guess what? But it always goes back to, it's going to go back. Okay, diversification. What does it mean to diversify? If you do decide this is what you wanna do, you wanna get into investment, um, this is the practice. Yeah, somebody, sorry, somebody asked a question real, real quick. I'll answer it. What so somebody asked, yeah, somebody asked, is the market is down right now, is it a good time to buy, right? So 
Absolutely. If a house is on, if a house is for three hundred thousand, and you can get the house for one ten, it's a good time to buy. If uh, the Jordans are two hundred dollars, and you can get the Jordans for eighty, it's a great time to buy. But yet, when the stock market is down, everybody stays away. That's when you should be running to the stock market when there's a downturn in the stock market. So keep that mindset. It's the Thank best you. time to buy when the market's down. Thank you. And in addition to uh, what my husband said, while you're, you're looking at the stock, make sure you look at the, you, do you do a research? Because while most of the stock market is down, there are some that are like the banking industry, JP Morgan, Bank of America is still high. So you wanna look at it to make sure you're buying at the lowest. You don't buy at the high prices. Again, do your research, okay? Um, diversification. Does anybody have any more questions before I keep going? Everyone good? Okay, diverse, diversification is the practice of spreading your investment around so that your exposure to any type of asset is limited, which means when you, when you have your investment, you don't want to only be in tech. You don't want, want to only be in banking industry. You want to spread it out. You want it to be between stocks, bonds. Um, you want to do mutual funds so that when the market, when the investment is up, usually the bonds are not doing very well. So, and sometimes when the bonds is up, the, the market is down. You want to have to make sure you have a really good balance. So this practice is designed to help reduce the volatility of your portfolio over time. One of the keys to successful investing is learning how to balance your comfort level. What are the advantages of diversification? First one, like we said, is to minimize your risk of loss. Preserve your capital, which means you don't lose your money. Generating returns. As we're talking about investment, most of us have jobs, but some people are day traders. This is the only job they have. So they have to diversify to make sure they have income coming in. If you're working, this is, I just put this comment, this, this comment here. If you're working, please do not forget to take advantage of your 401k match all 457B retirement accounts to help diversify even more. Because when your stock market is not doing well, your retirement account may not be doing well, but usually when you when your companies are retirement, they always negotiate with, with, with the people who's helping them manage it to make sure that, that you know during the market, when the market is down, that the risk is not as bad, okay? Oh. Yes, sir. I have a question from, let me read that. I'm sorry, somebody, one of my young, my, my, can you talk about short time goals and love, for example, and I bought two times, I bought two times. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Thank you, Prophet Dikwa. Prophet Dikwa said, talk about short term goal versus long term goal. We kind of talked about that. Is, for example, I bought, the example he gave is like, for example, I'm gonna give you my example. Like three years ago, I think it was around three years ago, Tesla was around 300, was actually selling $292. It was selling $300 and I bought 14 shares of that. And because Elon Musk was doing a lot of talking and impacting the market, I sold that thing when he got to like 350, I did make some money. But if I had waited, did you guys know like last year that $300 became $2,000? And when it became $2,000, he split the share into five. There was a split that happened to Apple last year too. And when he split it to, uh, into, into five, it was what $400. As of yesterday, that same $400 has grown to almost $700. It was about $800. $90 two weeks ago, he has grown. And I want to hit myself. It wasn't a short-term goal. I was just so scared and I just sold it. So we need to wait long-term for stocks such as Tesla, such as Apple. Apple looks like it's not growing, but just wait for it. I have stories about Apple, just wait for it. Um, somebody asked a question about um, IRA, Roth IRA. Yes, they're asking uh, for the difference between the IRA and the 401k. Oh, the IRA, the IRA is your private retirement account, while the 401k is a retirement account with private companies. When you get hired by a private company, most of them give you the ability to be able to invest in retirement 
with the company. And most of the time they will match. So the difference is the 401k is a company retirement account while our IRA is an individual retirement account. Does when that answer the to, question? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was saying when it comes to investing, if you, if you have stocks in your 401k or your IRA, you can invest your stocks without any taxes or any fees at all. There's no, uh, Sudi, did you get to um, capital gains? Not yet, right? No, not yet. Okay, so, there, so there's, no, there's no capital gains at all. We, we'll get to that, but there's no um, uh, uh, taxes. If you invest in stocks inside of your 401k and your IRA, since we're talking about stocks, you do not have to pay any fees or you don't have to pay any taxes on that. Okay, thank you. And another thing with 401k and 457b that you know, let's say you make $100,000 and you're single, you're single. What happens is the money that you put in your retirement is taken before taxes and it helps you for taxes because it lowers your income. So let me give you an example. Let's say brother Eric makes $200,000 right? He's going to be taxed really high because it's his wife and his baby, right? But for him to diversify and make sure that his tax is not that high, he can decide that I want to put 19000 I'm using that number, $19,500 in his 401k or 457b, because that's the maximum he can do if you're, if you're 40, 49 years old and younger. Okay, your maximum that you can put in your 401k and 457b is 19,500. What happens is that 19,500 reduces your income. So when you go for taxes, instead of it showing that you made 200,000, it's going to show that he made 180,000. Does that, does everybody understand that? So that's one of the benefits of putting money in your retirement. That, there have been some questions that I've seen but Eric. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Any question? Yes, there was a question about uh, should you prioritize your growth potential or generating returns? For example, some stocks grow in value a lot, but don't receive any dividends while mm -hmm. others waiting to see growth. Yes, I would definitely prioritize. Like, for example, my husband, my husband loves stocks that gives dividends. I, I love them too, but not as much as my husband. I look for things that potential growth. You understand? My husband looks for stocks that give dividends. It's really good because, you know, you're getting income. It's a good thing. But what I do, I look for potential growth. Like, what do I think if I invest in today will give me my return and even more? My return on investment like 10 times. Does that answer your question? Because I think it was Sister Molara that asked that question. So, so real quick, uh, some people might not know what a dividend is. So when a company actually makes money, um, they have an option to uh, either put that money back into the company or give that money to shareholders, right? So what a lot of companies will do is they're not growing a lot. So they'll, to entice people to buy their stocks, right? They'll give dividends, right? They'll pay out uh, uh, people who own their stock. They'll pay them out a, a small fraction of a, a small percent, right? And they'll do this quarterly. Most of them do it quarterly. They do not do it monthly. So you'll, you can make like $50, $60 a month, depending on how many shares you have. But yeah, a dividend is when a company pays out their shareholders with the profit that they make because they can just easily not pay. They can easily just take the profit and reinvest in research and development. But most companies um, do not pay a dividend. So AT&T does and some of the bigger companies like Coca-Cola. But yeah, I would definitely look for companies that pay a dividend. I hope, I hope that explained what a dividend is. Okay, any, more, any other question, Brother Eric? No, not right now. Okay. So when we talk about diversification, now I'm coming, the, 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 I'm trying to look at the graph that I have, this pie chart that I have on my left is your personal diversification. What are you, what are you using your money for? you you should have money. Like, you know, when you're out of school, you're working, you, you, one of the things that when you get to a certain age, you want to have money in property, 
you want to have a fixed income, whether you're working for somebody or you have a business, you have cash, which is your savings and put some money in stocks, right? Just, this is just regular. You should make sure that you don't have, you don't have your your money just in one place. You want to make sure you're diversified. And now when you get more comfortable in investing and you, as you're getting older, you want to make sure your portfolio for your retirement, for your, uh, whether it's with the company, whether it's your individual, re individual retirement account or your brokerage account is diversified so that it can be balanced. Okay. Recommendations. You know what, let me see something. Okay, these are my recommendations. And again, again, remember there's a disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a broker. You need to do your own research. Please remember to do your research. These are my recommendations that if you want to diversify, you want to look at the different industries. There's tech, there's tech cloud services, there's health, there's you know different brands, there's ETFs, bank services, online retail stores, travel. For example, tech, my favorite here is Apple and Tesla. You cannot go wrong. That's me, okay? Tech and cloud services. How many of you know that Amazon has cloud services? And that is the main service that brings their profit. All that online thing where we have them deliver stuff to our door does not make money for them. It's cloud services is the major source of revenue for Amazon. How many people knew that? A lot of people think, and the reason why I know that is because I research, I research to find out. And there's Broadcom, Salesforce. The only thing that I didn't buy is Zoom. And the only reason I did not buy Zoom, by the time I knew about Zoom was when we started working from home. So it's already too high, okay? Zoom is a good one because everybody's working from home. We're using Zoom right now. People use Zoom at work, so you know, okay? Health, Moderna. Anybody familiar with Moderna, Novavax? Moderna is one of the vaccines that is being used for COVID-19. I bought Moderna, I'm gonna give you an example. I bought Moderna, I think it was in March of 2020 at $27. And how much is it today? It's like $145, $145. That's over one year. Brands that will not go anywhere, that even when people are going through recession, they will still go there to buy. Starbucks, Coca-Cola, McDonald's. <laughs> ETFs, that's the, um, that's the exchange traded funds. The reason why I like ETFs is if you want to, when we talk about diversification, ETFs are the ones that have uh, a mixture of uh, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds in it. <laughs> Somebody needs to mute themselves. <laughs> okay. Hello. Okay. I'm coming. Okay. Can you still see my slide? Everybody still see yes. my slide? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, bank services, JP Morgan, Bank of America, online retail services, stores. It's Amazon again. Alibaba. Alibaba is the China, Chinese version of Amazon. And there's PayPal. Travel is Disney, Norwegian, Cannibal Cruise, Royal Caribbean, American Airlines. We, we know that when, the, when COVID started, the pandemic hit, they tanked. So that was the best time to have bought it. And even now, they have not reached the potential they were before COVID. Again, please remember to research before you buy this. Capital Jimmy, gain. Did you move your camera? It just shows it, your phone. Oh, it just shows my phone? Yeah, oh. I just see your phone. Okay. Is it better now? Yes. Okay. Capital gain. Capital gains are the profits from the sale of an asset, shares of, a, shares of stock, a piece of land, a business. The reason why I wanted to talk about this is for you to know that if you do invest in stocks, you do have to pay taxes, but it depends on when you sell it. There's, oh, Prophet Dikwa said, what are your short-term goals? Your short-term goals could be, you wanna pay for tuition and it's in two years 
and then you want to pay for it and you put investment now to make the money. Okay, now the caveat to it is if you do invest in stocks and you sell it within one year, you have the tax bracket is higher than when you sell it over one year. Okay, so there are different tax rates for single, married, fighting jointly, married, fighting separately, and head of household. But the charts that I'm showing here today is just for single filers. So you can go online and research that if I am married and if I decide to sell my stocks under one year, how much tax will I have to pay? Long-term capital tax is a tax on profits from the sale of an asset for more than a year. See the difference? Short-term is when you sell an asset one year or less. So long-term, I'm just, this is long-term. If your income is $40,000 and less, you pay 0% tax rate on your capital gain. Between 40,000 and 441,000, you pay 15%. Anyone who makes over this 441,000 has to pay 20% for, for any capital gain on their long-term, on long-term, any long-term capital gain. Anything over one year, if you decide to take your, you will have to pay this tax rate. Now, short-term. If you decide to take out the capital gain within one year, look at that. Look at the difference. Between $0 and $10,000, you have to pay 10%. Look at that. It's really high. Between $82,000 and $163,000, 24%. So that's why I said, if you don't need the money for emergency, stick to the market. Does anybody have any question? Any question? Okay. So. Online investment platforms. These are the platforms, the most popular platforms that you can start investment. And I always tell people, if, you, if it's your first time trading, I would ask you to use Robinhood. And the reason why I like Robinhood is you can, the app on your phone is so user-friendly. On your iPad is user-friendly and your computer is user-friendly. If you're a first time investor, you wanna use Robinhood just to start, kind of like your play money until you get comfortable. And then you can start using TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, JP Morgan, Fidelity Schwab, and Ali Investment. And I have all the logos here. I will tell you, I have Robinhood, I have E-Trade, and JP Morgan. And they all of them work very well, but I will tell you that Robinhood is the most user-friendly among the three. But why? What about the cash up trader? Yes. I've not... The cash out, I've not, you know, guys, I'm a little older than you guys. <laughs> I'm 44. So you guys feel more comfortable with cash up and pay out, PayPal. Babe, you have a, can you yeah, answer the, that the, question? The problem with cash up is, and, and PayPal and uh, Square and all that, they're not going to have all of the stocks. They're okay. not. They're, Robinhood doesn't even have the stocks. I, there's some uh, mid caps uh, uh, and low cap stocks that, Robinhood doesn't even have. So Cash App definitely won't have it. PayPal won't have it yet. Those companies are not real brokers. Those companies are just companies that are trying to get into brokering, uh, into the market. But yeah, you're going to find some tickers. I'll tell you a few tickers. And you're going to go and look at it. You will not find it in Cash App. You will not find it in PayPal. And you will not find it in Robinhood. So that's what we mean by you get started with Robinhood or Cash App or PayPal. Then you, 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 uh, you progress to TD Ameritrade or Chase because... Uh, Cash App won't have all the all the cryptocurrency as well and things of that nature, but it's a good it's a good starter tool. Okay, so thank you, babe. We have another question. Yes. Uh, the question is: Is it better to buy the individual stocks or the ETF of a stock? I would say um, I was I, I would do a combination. But if you want to start, let's say you have five hundred dollars, I would probably do ETF. Let's say I have five hundred dollars. Spider, which is SP, uh, that's SPY, has, it has Amazon in it, it has Apple in it, and that's $390. So what you do is like you buy a little of the companies that you like. So depending on how much you have, see, that's a very tricky question. Do you have $500 or do you have $10,000? Because you have, if you have $10,000, I would say you, you, yes, somebody just said ETF is a lot risk adverse, that's true. And that's why I said ETF, because ETF has a little bit of all the companies that you may like. 
So you just have to research it, depending on how much you have, okay? So when you're asking the question on, the next person, when you wanna ask the question of what should I invest my money with? I need you to help me because I'm, I'm, I'm a number person. Kind of like with number, I need you to tell me if I have $1,000, what do you think I should invest my money in? And okay, I agree with it, okay? They yes, said if they have $1,000, what should they do with their money? $1,000. If, mm -hmm. I, if I have $1,000, I would do definitely SPY, right? I would do SPY, probably buy one Apple, buy Microsoft. I would do like, I would do a combination if I have $1,000 to have a good mix. Does that help that person? That's my recommendation. And you can decide and say, you know what? I don't want to even deal with Apple because Apple is in SPY. I'm just going to use my $1,000 to buy all SPY, and that's okay. Does that help? Because SPY has Amazon, it has Apple, so you have the best of both worlds. Does that help? They haven't responded yet. I would recommend the same as this ball. Okay. Who is child of God, by the way? <laughs> Who is child of God? Does I didn't see the picture. I want to know who that is. Okay. Hope it's like, no. Okay. This is one of my recommendations. When you are going to get into investment, one of the things I tell people is I want you to be financial literate first. You need to know about your money, understand your money. Somebody say, can they have my slides? Okay. I will send the PDF to, um, to brother Eric. Okay. But Eric, you heard me. I will send my slides to you so that people can have it. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. One of the things I tell people that even before you go into investment, make sure you understand money. Understand what money means to you. What does money mean to you? The income that comes in, do you understand how you spend it? What is left after I pay my bills? What is my short-term goal versus my long-term goal? I, I would say even if, before you get in there, you should do your research. You should check your account. You should reevaluate the way you spend money. Do Am I the kind of person that I just like to shop, 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 shop? Even if I can't pay my bills, I just want to spend, 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 and wear the latest. It doesn't matter. You need to reevaluate yourself. So some of the resources I tell people is Dave Ramsey has books and he has podcasts. He talks about financial literacy. Those are the people I listen to. Su Susie Osman, there is a book that um, my husband introduced me to. Is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a very good book. I will watch CNBC. That's what I do for stocks. I go to Yahoo Finance when I need to research stocks. If somebody tells me about stocks, I don't just go ahead and buy it. I research it myself to see, do I want to buy this? Um, some of the podcasts that my husband and I listen to, and they are, the reason why I like them, they're African-Americans like you and I. So they understand that a lot of us are not very comfortable with investment because our parents did not introduce us to that. So they have their two guys, young guys, very brilliant guys that they have earning your leisure, EYL University. They have a podcast on almost every day. And there's actually a Nigerian sister also, her name is Terry Joma, that I think she was born here. She talks about stuff all the time. There's Mac Monroe and there's somebody called Red Panda. I love him too. I like to listen to him. So these are just resources for you, resources for you to tap into while you're thinking about, do I want to invest or not? So while we're doing this, I want to show you my Robinhood account. Okay. So that you understand what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, let me see if I can get in there. Please feel free to ask questions. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing now and then you give me access again, sir. Does anybody have any question? 
There's another question in the chat. Have you, have your investments paid for? Oh, never mind. It's a statement. Have your investments paid for your toys close outings? Uh, another resource she recommends is Graham Ste Stephen. Can you repeat that question again? It said at my investment it was. No, no, it was a statement. She said, "Have your investments paid for your clothes and outings?" Okay. Uh, and then another source she recommended was Graham Stephen. Oh, Graham Stephen. Okay, I'm not familiar with that. What is Graham Stephen? Is that a platform? I'm gonna share. Let me see if he's gonna allow me to share. Okay. This is Robin Hood, okay? The reason why it's black is because the market is closed. That's why you see black like this, okay? And what I like about this is so, I love it because it's so, um, it is so easy to use. Even me can use it. <laughs> I say that because even me can use it, okay? And what it shows is like, for example, look, um, let me see. Look at, look at, this is some of my investments. I will tell you this, you see the total value in my Robin Hood right now is 16,794. And guess how much I put in there? I only put $10,000. Within three, four years, it has grown over 60%. Oh, he's a YouTuber. Thank you, child of God. Thank you as a YouTuber, okay? And let me see, I wanna show it to you so that you can see that what I'm saying, because it shows you how you're doing, how much you put in. I'm trying to look for that screen. It is so easy to use. If I can use it, you guys can use it. Believe me. I'm trying to show you something. Okay, see, I'm gonna show you this screen. See, it tells you how much you've made all year. See that? Can everybody see that? That 67% is what I've made since I've started this investment with Robinhood. Okay? So let me give you an example. Remember I was talking about the travel industry. I have Royal Caribbean. I bought at $27 last year, March. Guess how much is it today? $90.72. Is it going to stay like this forever? Probably not. See? $90.72. Look at Apple. Average of $49. And now is at $120. So I'm just giving an example of this is something that I've done, that I've tested, where you just have to be very, very patient. You have to be patient and you have to do research. Yes, Rick, Ricky Gutierrez. Yes, I have listened to him. Yes, Ricky Gutierrez too is a very good one to listen to. So, so this is just my, I'm just showing this to you to see that this is what I've done. This is what I've, um, I've played around with, if you call it. And it's not going to be like this all the time, but it's, the market will always go back up. Okay. That is the end of my presentation. Does anybody have any question? Sister Fumi, yay. I see Sister Fumi Jane. Does anybody have any questions? Any additions? Anything that we can share with everybody? I just, any think, questions? Crypt, I just think crypto. Oh, everybody crypto. should focus on crypto for the next 50 years. But for the next five to 20, five to 50 years, I think everything's going to be about cryptocurrency. There's going to be no more dollar bills. Your phone is going to be your, your bank. Your phone is going to have a wallet on it. You need to focus on cryptocurrencies with Coinbase. That's going to be the future of, of almost everything you, you think about. All industries are going to be disrupted by, um, by blockchain and cryptocurrency. Those are the two things you need to focus on. So that's what I think everybody needs to think about. 
while diversifying their portfolio. Correct. Right? <laughs> New but a good, a good chunk of your re a good chunk of your investment needs to go into cryptocurrencies, not necessarily Bitcoin, but cryptocurrency. Yes, and especially when you're young, when you're in your twenties and your thirties. You have a lot of years and please do your research. Do your research. Do your research. Any question? One more suggestion. Defense stocks like Sister Fumi, defense. Yes, I agree. Defense stocks because I'm thinking, Miss um, Sister Fumi, because of military, we always, the, the US government always makes sure they have money. General dynamics. Okay. General dynamics. I'm going to look into that. Okay. I have Any a question. question? Yes. Um, I'm thinking about real estate, um, okay. and, and I saw on your graph that real estate was a big thing for diversification. Um, how should we go into real estate? Should we, because you said that if you don't want to manage, uh, I know managing property is very hard, especially if you have a busy schedule. Um, would you say, how would you go into real estate? How, what would you, your approach be in going into real estate? And if, okay, if, me personally, if, what you would do. Okay. Me personally, because it, de it depends. Like my husband likes real estate property that he would do. I am lazy on my Saturdays and Sundays. I am a homebody. I want to be home. I don't want to be worried about renters, right? So if you, if you have the time, uh, real estate property is really good to get into because a lot of money, make money from that. You just have to make sure that you buy when the market is down, okay? When, the, when you don't buy when the market is high and it's overinflated. So if you want to do real estate and you don't have time to manage, there are options. You can buy property with friends that you trust, but you have to make sure that you have a lawyer, you have a written contract. You could do that with a group of friends. Or you can go into, there's some mutual funds or stocks that are real estate uh, related. I have some of those in my 457B because I work with my immediate government. I have that. So there's, there are ways that you could do it is either if, you, if you're brave, like my husband, you can go into a property and you're not lazy like me, you could do property, but make sure you're buying when the market is down. Don't buy when it's too high. When you know a house was $200,000 and within one week it's $1 million, that is not the right time to buy it. Does that help? That helps, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah if, he, if he's going to get into REITs, though, there's different kind of REITs, right? Some of the REITs are commercial properties. Can you tell Some us the, what REITs is so that everybody knows oh, the, what that is? The real estate investment trusts, um, yeah. those are basically you're, you're, you're using, you're, you're getting involved in real estate trading, but you're not going to actually uh, to the person's house and, and changing toilets and all that stuff. You're still involved in real estate. So with REITs, right, um, developers get together and they create a trust and then they create a company and then they allow you to invest in their company. Uh, so real estate investors, uh, housing, the, the actual communities that you see being built in your house or commercial. Right now, commercial REITs are really down because everybody's working from home. That's what I meant. Take, when you look at a REIT, make sure you see where the REIT, most of the money is coming from. Is it coming from commercial buildings or is it coming from developments? Because developments are doing well. For, for homes, for, uh, you know, real, uh, regular people, buy a REIT that's more involved with housing than a re right now, REITs that are involved with commercial buildings are doing really bad because everybody's moving, everybody's working from home. So just know what you're getting into with REITs. Yes, that is so true because a lot of people, especially from New York and in California, New York working in the city, they are moving down to Florida to buy more suburbs uh, moving to the suburbs. So residential uh, investments are really good. Okay. Any, any, does that answer your question, sir? Did that help? No, that helped a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. Does anybody have any other question? Any question, addition? Yes, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, Hi. So <laughs> Is that Sister Julita? It's Sister Julita. So my brother keeps telling me to buy all these stocks, which I do. And um, he never gave me advice on when to sell them. So like I have a stock right now that I brought for $20 and it's now 300. Like, like what's your advice on when to sell the stocks? Like how long? What, what's, what kind of, what stock is this? It's um, one of those vaccinations. Okay. For example, yeah. okay. That, for example, 
I will tell you if it's the vac depending because I when Aurora Cannabis first came in, when he was I bought it like at thirteen dollars. I'm giving an example, and it went to three hundred dollars. You have to look at is it a volatile uh, uh, in, uh, investment? If it's volatile like um, Cannabis, I will sell right away. But if it has okay. to do with vaccine, because I have Novavax that I bought at sixty dollars, and he said it went up to three hundred dollars. I did yeah. not sell it because COVID is not leaving anytime soon. No, I didn't sell mine either. But so here's the thing. It's like I'm ha I have some of these stocks that have gone up really high. But mm -hmm. then when you don't sell them and then you look back, you know, they um, dip down. So and I've gotten some advice where some people are saying when, once your stock gets up to 30 percent of or increases 30 percent to what you actually invested, then you should just sell them like, you know, I don't know when I should See, start it, selling these stocks. It depends. Are you investing for retirement or investing now? The reason why I said I'm going to give you an example. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I'm investing right? for retirement. Invest in, yes, if it's for retirement, you leave it there to grow. I'll give an okay. example. Does Everybody should know who one Buffett is. His companies have these two main shares. It's called Berkshire A and Berkshire B. And the reason I said I had a co-worker that retired like two years ago. He bought Berkshire A like 30 years ago at a very low, low price that he would not tell me. When he was retiring, do you know how much that share was worth? It was worth $300,000 a share, Berkshire A. And because I could not afford that, I bought the Berkshire B. I bought it like at a 180, now it's at 260. So the reason why I said that, that if you have a stock that you know that is the trend that whatever the industry is working in, is for health, it's for vaccine. We're always gonna need vaccine. And if you listen to the news, what I tell people is like, you wanna listen to the news also, right? To see what is the trend. If you listen to Bill Gates, if you listen to our scientists, this pandemic that we have COVID, that's not gonna be end of pandemics, okay? So the reason I say that, that no vaccine is always gonna need, always gonna need to make vaccines. That's my take. I will not be scared to keep it. I will keep something like that, my Moderna, my Novavax, because this is not the end of COVID. Another strain may come. Yeah, okay? you're right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I agree as well. But uh, also, when you're, your exit strategy for a stock should be as soon as you say you put $300 in that stock, right? And then now it's up $10,000. You can maybe sell what you already put in, and now you're only playing with the house's money. Yeah, that's true. You can just look at it that way. And another thing that I advise people is like, people sometimes will ask, how much should I put in stocks versus bonds or whatever? There's a rule of 100 or 110. And what, what that rule is, whatever your age is, let's say you're 25 years old, right? You do 100 minus 25 so that you put 75%. 75% will be in stocks and 25% in bonds. And as you get older, you start to reduce your percentage in stocks. Because remember, we talked about per, um, stocks being very volatile. So as you get older and you're getting towards investment, you're getting to your retirement, you want to be less aggressive. Can you suggest some for IRTs? Okay. But Eric, do I have questions? I see questions from Sister Lizzie. Yeah. Yes, she asked about, uh, can you suggest some uh, real estate investment uh, that they should invest in? Okay. Some REITs? Yes. yes. Let me take a look. I have some, but I don't have them off head because it's in my 457B. So I'm writing, Sister Lise's, I'm writing her name down right now to suggest. Okay. Which apps to use? Oh. Apps to use for investment, I say, okay, I tell people for apps, when you're a first-time investor, I really, really like Robinhood, okay? I really like Robinhood. And you can do your research and see what you like, but I will recommend Robinhood because it's very easy to play around with. And you can see, I like the charts, the, you know, the pie chart. It shows you when you're making money, when the market is down. I like Robinhood. Any other question? Questions, questions? And and if you if you need more information, you can let um, Sister Fumi and Brother Folari know. 
that I can always come back in three months, four months, whatever time that's given to me to come back and answer your questions on financial literacy, on retirement. I have stuff on retirement and financial literacy because we need to know about retirement, how to take advantage of that. What is good stock to invest in while I can't finish? Let me see. While you're young. While you're young. Oh, mm -hmm. I love. I love Apple. Apple, people always use Apple, always use Apple. I love Apple. Tesla is kind of expensive. I love Apple. I love, um, I would say Bank of America because you always need the banks. Um, yeah, anything in the electrical vehicle space. Yes. Plug, um, anything related to electrical vehicles because that's the next 50 years too. So if you want to go into electrical vehicles, we all know Tesla is very expensive. So you can do Neo. Neo is the Chinese version of Tesla. Neo right now is at like $44, $50, while Tesla is like $700. So you want to start small. But you can decide and say, you know what? I want to buy that big cake. I want to be part of Tesla. Robinhood will allow you to buy a little pie of Tesla. So even if it's $50 you have, you can buy a little share of that. I see Sister Lizzie's hand up. Hi, good morning, everyone. Can I just ask my question? So what I was trying to ask was with the REITs, um, I know that um, you can invest in it in different places. So are you saying you can invest in it in Robinhood too? Or is, is I'm there a not sure path? if Robinhood... I don't think they have REITs. I don't think they do. That's what I that's meant. What, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. With Robinhood, yes. you can't... There's many stocks they don't have. A lot of large, a lot of small cap stocks, they don't have it. Uh, a lot of coins, they don't have. A lot of REITs, they don't have. So that's one of the reasons why Robinhood is just a starter. Once you get, once you get a few years into investing and trading, you might want to get into like TD Ameritrade. And, and Charles, yeah, Charles Schwab bought TD Ameritrade. So you're basically going to end up with Charles Schwab. There's only going to be a few brokerage companies, but you might want to end up with E-Trade or Charles Schwab. Okay, thank you. How about Weeble? What is that? Weeble. I like Weeble. The only problem I have with Weeble is it's a Chinese company. Be careful with Chinese companies. Um, yeah, like Zoom. Zoom is the Chinese company. TikTok, they're all getting in major trouble. Uh, if you read up on all these Chinese companies and espionage, be careful with those Chinese companies like Weeble. Yeah. And then also Laura has a question as well. Okay. Who has a question? Sister Molara. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mark, because I know we talked, we touched on um, like tax rates as you're thinking about when to sell or when to invest. But can you also touch on expense ratios? Because I know when you're looking into some of those brokerage platforms, like I'm someone who likes to keep as much of my money as possible. So in addition to thinking about taxes, um, do you also consider like the expense ratios for different funds and things like that? Most of the uh, brokerages now don't have heavy expense ratios unless unless they're doing the investing for you. If you're a retail investor, there's no major, it's not like back in the day. You're going to get expense, heavy expense ratios when you're letting them uh, trade for you. We're talking about like mostly individual trade where you trade your, for yourself. Because all the fees are gone now. Since Robinhood came out, all those fees are gone. And then in addition to what, um, what my husband said, for example, my, for my 457B, which is a, your private retirement account for government, you have, the, um, the, you have the ability to say, I want somebody to invest for me or I want to do it myself. And when they invest for me, they charge me so much every quarter. I just said, I want to do it myself. And you have to be able to do your own research because what they charge me every quarter is probably like $5. And I'm fine with that but I don't want you to charge me $100, no, because you're taking all my profit away. So like my husband said, the, the, the platforms that we told you about, because you're doing it by yourself, there are no expenses, they're nothing charged to you. Okay, Sister Molara? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Um, I've seen questions, yes? I have a question, um, if, if you don't mind again. Um, no. It sounded like your husband was um, had a little bit of reservation around Chinese stocks, um, but I'm, um, I thought I was understanding in the economy that uh, the Chinese stocks are getting higher because they have more equity and they have more money in the country. Is it not um, valuable to start 
looking into Chinese stocks? You've said a couple of, and you've actually said like crypto, you said um, Neo, you said Chinese companies that you've looked at, Abi, I mean, Alibaba, you said some of these things that are Chinese companies. Is it good to look into Chinese companies? Because they have a lot of money in those, in those um, markets as well. Yeah. So what I said was be careful with uh, using Chinese companies. I, I, I invest in EO and I'm, I'm into Alibaba. But let me explain why what I'm trying to say. Uh, Weeble, uh, Zoom, TikTok, all three of those companies are major, uh, I should say, investigation right now. TikTok is, in a, is, is a basically when you download that app on your phone. They're saying that the Chinese government is watching almost everything you're doing. So the uh, uh, number 45, Donald Trump, even uh, tried to deny access for Americans to use TikTok. OK, and then Weeble, that's another thing. It's owned and run by a Chinese company. So be careful with that. And I think that was another company. Oh, Zoom. Zoom has been in major trouble because of security and platforms and everything, all their servers are in China. So just be careful with those Chinese companies when it comes to security. Uh, I'm not saying don't invest in them, but just be careful using the applications themselves. That's what for I'm trying to say. For security purposes, and if you do invest, because I invest in you, if you do invest in them, it is your job to always do a research so that when they have, when they're having problems, when they're having problems, you're watching the news, you know it is time for you to sell, okay? When you know that they're having problem that, for example, let's say Neo did something, maybe they're not in compliance with US companies and America is about to put a sanction on them. That is when you need to start to watch Neo. Do I need to sell all the shares that I have? That's okay. what we're saying. Okay. Does that answer you? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, thank you. Okay. Yeah, with, uh, with, with Biden in office, um, it's going to open up a lot more for China to 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 come into America, um, and there'll be you know a lot more a lot less regulation on China, right? Because the last four years China was really 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 regulated hard on what they can do and all that. So the next four years you'll see a lot of Chinese companies trying to come into America. But just be careful. Not I'm not saying don't invest in them. Just be careful using the applications because of security. These, com these companies, and uh, you download the app on your phone. I'm into IT security. You download the app on your phone, and basically they're, they're, they're doing, they're watching everything you're doing. They're sending it back to China. Just be careful. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. But uh, Eric, do we have any question? Let's Sorry, I have in. another question, please. Yes. Um, I think your husband was saying a bit earlier, um, in terms of stocks to watch or look out for in the future. Could he just repeat them, please? like the types of stocks they you you do uh, your kind I, of stocks I just say I, I say EVs electric EVs, vehicles, can you yeah, electric vehicles tech and um and just cryptocurrency anything related to blockchain technology crypto nfts um all anything related to crypto and anything related to blockchain is, is what you need to look at. Like anything related to those type of technologies are gonna be the future of, of, of humanity. Like web 3.0 is all related to, to blockchain. Like everything, every, we're moving into like AI. So look, if you're, if you're looking into buying stock, AI, blockchain, EV, and, and, and uh, DNA slicing. Those are the four major things for the next 50 years. So research AI, blockchain, EV, and, and DNA, DNA um, slicing, which is and, and probably um, a quantum computing, but those are the those are the four, and just invest in those things because those are going to be the future uh, for the next fifty years. And, crypto and I will, and because he's an IT guy, I will add on to it to say also look at health companies because we're living longer, so people are going to need more medication, they're going to need more vaccine as we're living longer. Because I see, child of God, I am so, I, I, I agree with you. We need to diversify. So you need to look into health, uh, health companies, pharmaceuticals, do your research. And I always, I'll keep saying cloud services. Even though I'm not IT, but I live with an IT person. My brother is IT, so I hear this all the time. A lot of companies are moving from infrastructure into cloud services. So you want to also look into companies that are doing cloud services. You want to look into that too. Diversification, diversification is the word. 
Any other question? Um, like a lot of young people, they're looking in, to go into the market to buy and sell fast to make um quick money. How do you, how do you make quick money without like having too many losses? That's a very good question. I'm not in there to make <laughs> quick money. I don't know, babe. You want to answer that? I like that one. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's it's impossible to make quick money without risks. Without right. Risk. Every yeah, options options are a way to make quick money. Research options, but with options you can lose a lot of money too. But you can make a lot of money very fast. And yeah, options are short term trading, um, or or you can look into uh, you can look into um, scalping, which is pretty much uh, trading within the first thirty minutes of the market, and then uh, and then uh, doing a day trading, but risky those two are very risky day trading scalping options all three of those are extremely extremely risky so but you can make a lot of money but they're they're just risky there's no way to get the risk out that's yeah. that's my answer no way. and any and, and if you want like I child of god just uh, uh put in chart which i absolutely agree with you don't get into options don't get into this until you research and you know about it. even me i'm still learning about options i think it's so confusing it's like gambling so if you want to get into this, this has to be your day job. It's risky. You have to know it inside out. It is very risky. You have to have the experience. You have to do the research. You have to read. You can't just listen to somebody telling you do this. You have to do your own research. Any more questions? More questions, discussion, addition? All right, we want to thank our mother, our prophetess, Paula Shoronke Jean, and our husband, Mr. Jean. We're really grateful on behalf of all of the youth for your empowerment seminar today. Uh, we thank you because we know that financial literacy is the key to uh, successful futures, and this is a great seed that you've sown. Um, we, we, are, it, 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 we are in deep gratitude to you for sharing your knowledge. Um, for all of the youth that have joined us, whether you're from the Agbojesu Church or Celestial, or you're coming from London or Nigeria, or even the CNS Church here in the U.S., um, I want to assure you that this is not the last that you'll hear from them. We're definitely going to make this a series. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll consult with our mother and make sure that we figure out what, you know, and, and, and of course, her, her co-leader uh, co here. <laughs> Her husband, who I'm seeing for the first time, he's, he seems like a very cool gentleman. Um, so, so we're going to make this a series and we'll get back to you with the dates. And, you know, maybe we can do a step by step guide. You know, the next time we meet, we can start off with step one and maybe we can work together throughout the year and, and, and just, you know, uh, document our progress uh, in investment and, you know, with the, with the market. So I think we'll make this a series if you agree, our mother. Yes, son. definitely. Definitely. So, so start working on your, your part two, uh, <laughs> series two, so that we can, we can get together. But we do thank you again. Uh, our mother is very experienced with finance. I think she manages a $700 million budget in the city of Miami. Uh, and so she, she and, her, and her husband as well. Um, so this is a really great resource. And I think they're available to mentor, to help us, you know, guide us through uh, our investments and, and, you know, taking those first steps. And hopefully uh, we can have her to share ideas, bounce ideas off of her uh, going forward into the future. So this, there will be a part two, and I encourage you to, you know, stay tuned. Uh, the slides, we will make sure that we get those out to you. Also, we've recorded this presentation. So if you want to share it with your fellow youth members in your churches or in your area, Area, we will we will also make that available to you as well. So we thank you both. I think at this point we don't have much money to give you. We That's would it. love to give you a million no. dollars to invest. But but what we can do is we can pray for you. So if everyone can, if you're in a place where you can um, unmute, and even if you can't, uh, we just want to pray for her and her husband. Uh, let's just offer a, a prayer for them to for God to bless their home, God to, you know, pave the way for a greater uh, financial future, for happiness, for unity, for love, and for blessings, uh, long life, good health. So if we can all just raise up our voices quickly, 
Um, and if you can unmute, if you're in a place where you can unmute, let's just, you know, offer prayer for our mother for this amazing, amazing topic that she gave us. So prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you and we exalt you on behalf of our mother. We thank you for giving her the opportunity to do this. Father, we pray that you bless her and the house of the mother in the name of Jesus. As she has set time to do what Jesus meant to do, we know that the last thing that she can do is to make it in the house of the mother. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the shape of the house of the mother. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the shape of the house of the mother. Let us also pray for all of us here on this line that as we have learned something of value that this word seed that has been planted will will germinate will 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 manifest a great harvest in our life financially that we will be able to see the fruits of this blessing Amen. Amen. in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus oh lord in learning to do oh we have the opportunity to learn from what is the most powerful around the world that we can learn from the name of Jesus in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask our father, the pastor of Miami Church, where our mother goes to give us the seal for the prayer. Uh, thank you, Lord. Before, before the seal, let me quickly appreciate Brother Jimmy Jean again. Thank you so much, Brother Folari. Brother Jimmy Jean is a big asset for our youth here, and we thank God yes, uh, that he's opening up that uh, ability to all of us. Thank God. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Father, we have blessed our voices, Lord. We ask that you shall seal it. And all yes. that we have professed shall come to pass in our lives in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May your grace continue to be sufficient and be more than enough for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As Amen. we venture to, 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 to be better, as we venture Amen. to progress, you shall ordain that progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It is not your wish or your plan for us to be poor. Therefore, and as we are doing our part, we call on you, Lord, to do your own part and bless us immensely in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love Amen. of God, and the sweet fellowship Amen. of the Holy Spirit rest Amen. and abide with us all in Amen. Jesus. And we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. you. Praise God. 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 So on Monday, we have our uh, monthly Bible study. Uh, the, certain, or the, the preacher for our Bible study will be uh, Brother Tolu from Atlanta. The topic is going to be how you can grow in the knowledge of Christ. Um, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday, we do ask everyone to join us. Uh, we will be sending out the flyers and posting them on all our social media sites. Uh, so please, we do ask you to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Brother Fowler, is there anything else? Uh, thank you all immensely. And we'll see you again uh, at the next uh, Financial Empowerment Seminar. Thank you again, our mother. Thank you again, our father and our pastor from Miami. We, we're grateful. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Have a good day.